Hello, everyone, and welcome to the MTG Paper Legacy League Finals. Um, I can't tell if I'm frozen. It looks you like were I'm frozen for a second, but you're good now. <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry about that. Um, yep, this is the MTG Paper Legacy Finals. Uh, I am McDiff, joined by PresBOTW. Uh, Pres, how you doing? I'm doing pretty well, and uh, we got a weird occurrence going on today, because if you haven't noticed, I'm right here, and I'm also uh, over this way as well. So, uh, yeah, what ended up happening here is, uh, basically, due to the growth of the Discord and our participation in the leagues, uh, especially for January, because in January we had a 70... Two? It might have been 77. Uh, we had 70 something players for this month's league, which is fantastic. However, the thing is, is a lot of the players are coming from the uh, more Eastern Hemisphere and central parts of the world, right? So, you know, your Europe and your Asia and stuff like that. And it's very hard to fit in this time slot in order to play the league finals. And so, because of that, we have pre recorded these league semifinals and finals and we'll be showing them now in video format so which is pretty good so yeah it's a lot of fun anyway <laughs> yeah uh it's it's gonna be good for uh worldwide participation which we've yes. been getting a lot of uh yeah and i know that's one of the things that some people have mentioned as a concern before is the fact that uh they wouldn't be able to make the the finals if they ended up doing well just because of the time it's at so doing it this way i think gives options for a lot more people to join in and play so that should be good but uh anyway for this part of the semifinals here uh we have strawberry shortcake versus naya flagstones uh and for those who do not know strawberry shortcake is red white painter uh, and Naya Flagstones is functionally a lands deck powered by Elvish Reclaimer, uh, which is super sweet. It, it looked really cool. Um, we're getting uh, right out the gate from Z-Guy the start they want, uh, Savannah, and a Reclaimer. Yes, very good start for sure. And uh, Prez, it looks like you're leading us off on a... Uh good start as well i can't imagine yeah. you go uh double pedal um on turn one without something good to do with it oh yeah and that is an excellent start against this deck for sure yes uh so up note as well the league playoffs once you have won your pod are open deck list and normally i wouldn't just jam a blood moon like this but knowing that there's no force of will on the other side or anything else functionally to get really punished uh, by this, at least, I'm free to just slam it here, and uh, I'm not going to lie, this Blood Moon has been MVP for this whole tournament. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much rode the way through the, the 16th round, or the, the pre-quarterfinals and the quarterfinals, and then in the semi, starting off with it in turn one versus lands. So When it's good, it's great, right? When it's good, it's fantastic. But, uh, yeah, so we also do, though, see Zig following up here with a Mox Diamond into a Sylvan Library. And this is uh, a fantastic start as well, especially given the Blood Moon. You know, having the Library to dig deeper as well as also having the Mox Diamond to keep your colored mana up. So it's definitely good. And then Zig actually just jams all the cards here and takes eight life and draws everything which is uh, a very aggressive start, but uh, it works out. Uh, it works out pretty good in that regard, especially uh, Painter's not a deck that pressures your life total very much. So yeah, I was just about to say. I think in this matchup, um, clearing the top of your deck, uh, especially with a Blood Moon in play, seems like seems fine to me. Yeah, exactly. And then we also see again that Mox Diamond allowing to play the Exploration here. It's a very very good card, especially given the way that the, the Reclaimer works. But, uh, yeah, so in this case right here, the Ancient Doom's turned off by Blood Moon, so it's just producing a single red, so we get Imperial Recruiter to go grab a Painter Servant here. Um, just one of the parts of the combo. Uh, and for anyone who is unfamiliar with how Painter Servant works, uh, Painter Servant makes all cards on the battlefield in every player's hand, like anything that's not in play or on the battlefield or spells, uh, 
the chosen color in addition to their other colors. So typically what you want to do is you usually would name the color blue to turn on effects like Red Elemental Blast and Pyroblast, which are extremely powerful. Not very good in this particular matchup natively. However, with how much blue there is in the meta in general, the card is, like, Pyroblast is just extremely good, and using the painter to turn it on into a modal spell that's half Vindicate and half Force of Will for one mana is very powerful. So it looks like here we're just fetching, or we fetch with an on end step with the Elvish Reclaimer to go and grab a basic planes here. And then with the uh, Sylvan Library, just taking the one card. Uh, and we're going to follow up with a second Elvish Reclaimer here. So of note, these Elvish Reclaimers are one twos right now. Uh, however, Zig on end step will be able to sacrifice another land in order to put three lands into the graveyard, which will turn both of those Reclaimers into one mana three force, which are very powerful creatures, on top of being able to tutor basically anything in the deck. So you're going to see here another, or the Painter Servant come down, and this is why you name blue here. Um, so you see we flip the red immediately, and then we're going to red Elemental Blast. I believe I target the planes here. And uh, so, of note, Red Elemental Blast doesn't have a target. Oh, we're hitting actually a Reclaimer here. Or, no, 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 Sylvan Library. My bad. I apologize. Yes, Sylvan Library was the target on that one. Uh, I think that's absolutely the correct target here. Uh, yeah. Just removing that engine from the from the board is, is going to be important, I think. Because, uh, yeah. like we were saying, this isn't a matchup where the life total is pressured. Uh, no, for sure. In, in my case, you know, um, and, and this is a risky thing here. So you see what happens here about how Zig uh, ends up fetches up a Dark Depths. If Zig has an answer to this Blood Moon, the Dark Depths, because of the changes to Blood Moon um, in, when was it? I think two or three years ago, uh, all lands enter the battlefield as mountains. So Dark Depths is going to enter as a non-basic mountain with no ice counters on it. So if that Blood Moon goes away, then immediately you just get a free Merit Lage, which is very risky. However, at the same time, in a particular matchup or a deck like this, the, um, the power of Blood Moon is still just cannot be understated there. Um, does... Zigaif have any main deck way of dealing with the Blood Moon? Uh, so Zig does not actually have a main deck way to deal with the Blood Moon, and that's the thing, is Zig basically uh, has to rely on these Elvish Reclaimers. Skyclave is in the main. Skyclave, yes. That is true, actually. Uh, yeah, Skyclave Three Apparition copies. would be able to do it. Three copies of Skyclave Apparition. Yeah. And then we see here a follow-up with a Karn, the Great Creator. So in this particular case here, Karn, of note, is going to turn off the Mox Diamond. Uh, very powerful ability there. Again, because Mox Diamond is a source of colored mana, uh, being able to turn it off with Karn is very good. Yeah, uh, keeping Zigaif limited to their planes as their only source of colored mana I th is a really good uh really good thing here yeah yeah so that right here we're going to get a down tick on the karn and then going to grab a lion's eye diamond here and i think the the rationale behind that is lion's eye diamond again it produces the three mana you need in order to activate grindstone so i actually believe in this particular situation i'm holding on to another pyroblast in hand here uh and if that's the case i can play the grindstone answer something, or if uh, Zig tries to cast something in response, then I can use the counter, uh, the Pyroblast to counter, and then also crack the LED in order to get the three mana I need in order to activate the Grindstone and do it all in one turn. However, in Zig's case, you can see here, he just keeps on reclaiming with the Reclaimers, uh, you know, what they're doing, but uh, he's got both the basic forest and the basic planes out now, which are the only two basics in Zig's deck. Um, and that's the only issue, though, is, you know, that blast zone, 
it's a mountain. Savannah, it's a mountain. Dark Depths is a mountain. Devers Travenport is a mountain. And then, you know, Karn's turning off the Mox Diamond. So we're running, we're Zig's running really, really thin on colored sources here. Well, and that, uh, what we had talked about, the, um, the Skyclave is no longer an option right now because of yeah. the lack of a second white source, which uh, I think in the main deck, there is only one basic planes. So yeah. as long as the Karn is on the battlefield, there is no way to cast the uh the skyclave to deal with the blood moon yeah uh, uh <laughs> racket <two. laughs> or racket 822 thank you very much for the follow <laughs> so again uh we i just want to clarify that because this is a recorded match uh our layout is a little bit um odd that's probably why you don't see twitch chat showing up below us on screen because again this is a uh recorded video and because it wasn't live while being recorded that's why it's not showing up on screen there but uh we're still doing what we can there so thanks everyone else for coming to hang out today and for all the follows and everything as well uh so in this particular turn actually i ended up drawing the grindstone after blocking with the painter servant um which was uh unfortunate let's say <laughs> Um, and there's no you. You run all four of your painters in the main, right? All four of my painters are in the main deck, and the biggest reason for that is because that um, Imperial Recruiter and also uh, Enlightened Tutor can both both of those cards can grab a painter. Um, the the big reason for not running again, it's well, it's largely Imperial Recruiter is the big reason why, but also. Painter being able to turn on the red blast makes it more than just a combo piece with grindstone. It's how you kind of control a game with pyroblasts. So that's part of the reason why you always want to be running four painters in the main deck as much as you can. Okay. And uh, also of note there, uh, down tick the Karn, crack the LED while holding priority uh, to make the mana. Go grab an ensnaring bridge and play it out in order to keep those Elvish Reclaimers at bay. So I'm currently hellbent here, having no cards in hand. I have the Blood Moon out, Grindstone, Karn, the uh, Ensnaring Bridge, and then Uptake on Karn there to take up the Mox Diamond just in case Karn does get answered here at some point. And yeah, then I draw a second that. Grindstone in a row. <laughs> I think it's really smart to take out the Mox Diamond again, because I, I think that Zygaif's only real out here is both killing Karn and... Uh, Sky claving the Blood Moon, and without that Mox Diamond, uh, he also has to kill Karn, draw the Sky Clave, draw another Mox Diamond in order to make that happen. So, yeah, exactly. Um, any any way that you can really go about shutting shutting it down in, in as many ways possible, I think, is uh, is smart here. Yeah, you can so... just sit back and relax and wait for your combo to take place. Yeah, exactly. And like, I, I've been playing Painter for a long time, and one of the weirdest parts about the deck is it's a deck that feels like you're losing until you win. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's it sounds very bizarre, but it's basically how it works. So, because like in this particular scenario, yeah, it's you know not really doing anything, but at the same time, like a top decked Painter can kill someone. Yeah. It's kind of all over the place. And then, you know, Goblin Crater Maker here, it's a really weird addition to the deck that came out with uh, Guilds of Ravnica, but it still works out really well. It's just bizarre because Painter turns off the Destroy Colorless Permanent mode. That is interesting. Yeah. So I think here what I do is I actually down tick the card to zero and then grab the Engineered Explosives. And I think the biggest reason why is because that these Reclaimers are, I, again... Uh, I am no lands player. If anyone knows a way out of this using those reclaimers, it's probably Zig. Yeah. <laughs> so in this case here, it's you know crack the the um, engineer explosives on one. So in this case here, uh, what that'll do is I'll lose both of the grindstones, and then Zig will lose the exploration in both reclaimers. Oh, and uh, Cathor in the chat also pointing out that he can discard the Skyclave and cast it with Savine's Reclamation. That um, is true. That 
is a line I hadn't thought of. Savine's Reclamation is always one of those cards that just kind of slips to my mind as far as uh, <laughs> as far as an option. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's just it too, is I wasn't even thinking about that either. Because again, I'm not terribly familiar with Savine's Reclamation. So as you see, I drew all three grindstones in my deck in a row. <laughs> It was a bit unfortunate, but uh, what do you do? It ended up working out, though, with the engineered explosives there. So, And this yeah. Sylvan Library is just doing so much work, too. Just being able to see that many cards deeper, especially as well about how you're basically pondering three, and then with the Reclaimer, you end up shuffling your library at the end of every turn. It gives you a fresh three cards every single turn. It's very powerful. We are seeing a Valakid exploration here from Zigaif. Yeah, uh, you're welcome uh, on the red man of Zigaif. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Wasteland coming in, which... Yeah. And then, yeah, so we're actually going to see here a flashback on the Savin's Reclamation in order to grab the exploration and the Elvish Reclaimer. Uh, and then that exploration hitting the uh, wasteland there allows them to play a second one. And then at the end of the turn, the um, tabernacle going to the graveyard, which is going to end up damaging me for one life there, putting me down to 17. So, and, and that's kind of one of the things I was a bit worried about here is that now uh, Zig functionally has a clock. Um, do you have... Do you know if you have any cards in hand at this point in the match? Uh, I am I am hell bent at this point. So I use the white dice, the gigantic white dice, thirty five mil by the way, uh, in order to um, to show how many cards I have in hand. And at this point, I believe for the rest of this game, I'm basically hell bent at the end of every turn, okay. which uh, is really good with the scenario bridge. It turns out. <laughs> yeah, and then we're good. Gonna... Tends to be the case that if you're uh playing under an ensnaring bridge being hellbent is pretty nice. Yeah. And then uh, so we get that basic forest into the um, into the oh my goodness, into the playing the second exploration which allows him to chain off a Falcon exploration there. Chicken Pat Pie, thank you very much for the follow. Yeah, thanks so much for the follow. Yeah. And then of note here though, uh, he ends up breaking on the um, life from the loan. However, with that going to the graveyard, it uh, it's basically turned on now, which is very concerning. Because <laughs> he gets three lands from his graveyard every turn, and he gets to play three lands a turn, and the Valkan exploration is very, very fast. With the Savine's Reclamation uh, out of the graveyard at this point, uh, thanks for the follow, Dread888. Um, yes, thank you. I don't know. I think the only line here for Zigaif to win is via the Valakid exploration. I believe so. So in this case here, now I have a card in hand at end of turn. And then Reclaimer doing rec Reclaimer things. Like, and, and that's just it. It's like, I, I am aware of how lucky I am that I got that Blood Moon down so early because, oh my goodness, I would have been so dead this game <laughs> without it. Uh, Cathor for pointing out that Mox Diamond is back online at this point. I, yes. I missed that. So there is there is still the out of um, the Reclaimer. Yeah. Uh, and we can pat pie with a big sub. Thanks so much for coming out and showing your support. Yes, much appreciated. We've had a humongous influx of new people in the past, uh, past uh, I want to say, 35 hours or so. Uh, so thank you, everyone who joined in recently. Again, we are the MTG Paper Legacy Discord, and this is currently our finals of the January League. 70-something uh, players, it was a great time. So definitely advise everyone to sign up. I believe, actually, we sign up for the... February League just went live today as well. So if you get the chance, head on over and make sure you sign up for the February League. Um, yeah, so what we got here is an end step. Uh, I was mm -hmm. just going to say, I just dropped the um, the registration link in the chat. Perfect. So, uh, if you're interested in signing up for the League, you can take click that link. It'll take you over to the Google Forms sign-up page. 
and uh, yeah. we'd be happy to have you. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's welcome there. It's a good time. So so here we go, just going off with Valakit Exploration here. And, uh, yeah, the box diamond being online is a huge help and going up to now four land drops a turn. I, I, again, I am so lucky this Blood Moon is online. I would not have been winning this game without it. <laughs> so natural grindstone activation there, top two cards, and then uh, end step again, last card from Valakid Exploration goes away, and then you just hit a, uh, another land there, puts me down to 15. Zig's still at eight. All 12 of the damages come from the Sylvan Library. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we did mention the fact that uh, the life total wasn't going to be necessarily pressured there. So Yeah, exactly. And uh, of note here, though, a very, very powerful top deck via Goblin Welder. Um, Welder is an absolutely phenomenal magic card in general. Um, a lot of people, I feel, don't kill it when they should. <laughs> Uh, and you have a painter in the bin at this point, yeah? I do have a painter in the bin, and that's one of the things that Zig is kind of worried about here, and one of the things Zig has to kind of uh, try and find an answer for is uh, he needs to come up with an answer before this uh, Goblin Welder is no longer summoning sick. He's actually, in this case right here, Zig's actually doing a library count just because of the the natural mill activation from Grindstone is actually a very, le a very, very real threat at this point. <laughs> and again, that's largely because of, again, the power of Valakid Exploration allowing you to functionally draw, you know, 30, 40 lands a turn. So we're going to recline her here for a Caracas Mountain. <laughs> and then this is going to trigger the Valakid Exploration and then see how much we just chain off here. So in this particular case of so this Skyclave Apparition now is a... Uh, this, this is exactly what Zig wanted to see. However, there's also the Ensnaring Bridge out, which is a bit of an issue. And the other problem, too, is that even if Zig does hit the Blood Moon, the Goblin Welder will just kill him immediately next turn with uh, Welding in the Painter. So uh, if you take out... Situation. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of just it, is that if you hit the Welder, then you're just still kind of sitting behind this Blood Moon dirtling a lot, right? Yeah. So it's kind of rough, and that's, I think, part of one of the reasons why I was just like, yeah, that's fine. Pick your poison. <laughs> yeah, the Blood Moon does get exiled here, so immediately you'll see Zig sacrifices the Dark Depths and makes a free Merit Leech. Yeah, which I think we knew was coming. Yeah. At this point, maybe he's just thinking that you might forget that there's a painter in your graveyard. Yeah. Uh, and again, one of the big things that's um, of note about uh, this league finals in semis as well is the fact that this is open deck list. I know there's no punishing fire in Zig's list in this particular case, right? Yeah, and the only uh, thing you have to worry about specifically is swords being in the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The swords to plowshares is very real, but um, you know that's a easy to get around threat. And the other thing too is that Swords of Plowshares doesn't answer Grindstone, it doesn't answer Karn, it doesn't answer uh, Blood Moon. You know, it it, it kind of leaves most of that stuff up. And um, yeah, anyway. So for sideboards here, uh, actually here, why don't you read off uh, why don't you read off Zig's sideboard here, Mike? Uh, so Zig's got two crop rotations, three deafening silence, two pyroblast, a red blast, a swords to plowshares, two null rod, two force of vigor, and two mind break traps. Uh, force of vigor, great. Null rod, great. I don't know if you want anything else about this, but that might be just because of the fact that, uh, you've told me how, uh, painter works. Uh, so bringing in the, the red blast and the uh, pyroblasts may not be the option here. Uh, yeah, and 
And um, I actually talked to Zig after after the match was over, and Zig does not end up boarding in Pyroblast here. Uh, however, the two Null Rods, the two Force of Vigors do end up coming in, and I believe uh, there were two crop rotations, and I think think the the sword supply shares also came in for sure yeah swords makes a lot of sense as well yeah uh, what, um, about, what about you prez how did you sideboard for this match so in this particular case here uh my sideboard is and again i played card the great creator so this is a wish board um there's a lot of cards that are going to stay in the sideboard just because of the way that card interacts with it uh, and you have one engineer explosive one's lion's eye diamond one tormod script one grindstone three copies of lightning bolt one Pithy Needle, two more Red Elemental Blasts, uh, two Surgical Extractions, one Ethersworn Cannonist, one Ensnaring Bridge, and one Mycosynthlitis. So, in this particular case here, what I do, I'm pretty sure, is I literally just board in one copy of Lightning Bolt. Mm -hmm. And biggest reason for that is because um, it answers a Reclaimer while they're still small. Uh, so do you trim... Uh, pyroblast or a red blast for that if you're not um, going red or if you're not going planning on naming blue or are you still planning on naming blue against uh, uh i think in this particular case because i know that there's a null rod i think i have to name blue okay uh same thing as well uh a force of vigor will blow me right out and not having the ability to counter that is a bit of an issue yeah that that makes a lot of sense yeah, and I think that's the other thing as well, is that, um, you know, most decks usually run two or three copies of Red Blast in the board. I have the potential to board up to seven copies of it. <laughs> uh, painter, the, the, my build of Painter here main decks five, and then can board in up to two more. Uh, that being said, though, um, Pyro Blast is... It's almost a Sacred Cow in a sense, where it's almost impossible to cut. Uh, largely because of the fact that uh, of the way it's templated. So Red Elemental Blast is a very easy cut, especially in a matchup like this where there are no natural targets for it. So uh, people who are unaware, the difference between Red Elemental Blast and Pyroblast, and most oftentimes the reason Pyroblast is favored over REB, is because that Pyro or Red Elemental Blast is only allowed to target blue permanents and blue spells. Pyroblast is allowed to target anything so you can cast it onto an empty board and the spell will just fizzle if the target is not blue. So that being said, if you draw a red elemental blast without a painter uh, and you have an ensnaring bridge out, the card is stranded in your hand. If you draw a pyroblast, you can waste it on something and at least get it out of your hand to keep your ensnaring bridge at zero. Um... So yeah, uh, again, if you're just joining us, we are the MTG Paper Legacy uh, Discord, and these are our uh, monthly uh, league finals. Um, we are uh, starting this month doing pre-recording of the finals um, so that we can be more inclusive of people all around the world, um, and they're not just limited to this uh, this particular time, time slot. Month, uh, yeah, which is why you see. Prez both commentating and uh, as one of the the people in this match. Yeah, which is actually kind of interesting. It's it's kind of nice being able to explain what's going on. <laughs> uh, so Zig takes a mulligan here, and I am slam keeping this seven. Absolutely slam keeping this seven. Um, what's in your hand here? Uh, I don't remember exactly what's in the hand, but uh, I know it had the ability to Blood Moon very early, and that was the big reason I kept it. <laughs> I know that there's an Enlightened Tutor in there, and the ability to grab a Plateau. Uh, I can't remember much else about the hand off the top of my head, but uh, I do remember that it... Uh, or was it actually in the quarterfinals? It might have been in the quarterfinals that I did that. I, I, this whole this whole thing's a blur now. <laughs> I remember uh, at one point I ended up getting my hands basically struck apart with a cabal therapy, and then ended up putting the blood moon on top at the end of the turn, and then landing the blood moon anyway, which uh, worked out well. So of note, though, the big thing as well. Um, 
again, this is an open deck list playoff event. And uh, of note as well, a lot of the Strawberry Shortcake builds that are going around these days are running a lot lighter on Blood Moons just because of online specifically. The, pr uh, the prevalence of Dreadhorde Arcanist in the Rug Delver lists because Blood Moon doesn't stop the Lightning Bolt, Dreadhorde Lightning Bolt uh, interaction, which is absolutely devastating for Painter decks. And uh, the other issue as well is that Snowco is just inherently strong against Blood Moon. This is a really strong start from ZX Extremely here. Extremely fast start. Oh, I remember what this was. I do have a Blood Moon in my hand. However, <laughs> in this case, we go and just enlighten Tutor. And what we're going to do here is we're actually going to grab an Ensnaring Bridge. And big reason for that is there is absolutely no capacity for Merit Lage to ever attack with an Ensnaring Bridge unless something went horribly, horribly differently than you were expecting it to go, and you have 21 cards in hand during your opponent's turn. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe if you cast a uh, Appear into the Abyss. Quite possibly. Uh, in this particular case, though, I know there's no Appear into the Abyss in either of these lists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're going to draw the Ensnaring Bridge here, and um, of note as well, so we're just going to slam the Ensnaring Bridge right now uh, off of an Ancient Tomb. And of note here, Zig actually mentions whether or not he's going to try and make the Merit Lage and then just hope to top deck an answer and uh, for the bridge. And then the issue with that, though, is if he makes the Merit Lage, then he's down two lands, right? Because uh, he's going to lose the, the Dark Depths to the Legend rule, and then he's going to have to sacrifice the Thespian stage to the ability. Right, so in this case right here, he actually ends up makes Sesame Stage a copy of Basic Planes, which is uh, very important for later. Yeah, that that is. Really smart. Yeah. Uh, Sylvan Library, excellent pickup for Zigife. Yeah, yeah, and that's just it too. Zig is now helping, and this is an absolutely phenomenal board state to have for being empty handed, especially with having the Sylvan Library on now. You have the Reclaimer, you have the Exploration, and you have the Sylvan Library. Like, this is probably one of the best turn uh, turn threes you could ask for, or... Yeah, turn threes, yeah. Um, so, of note here, hilariously, uh, I actually completely forgot to board out the Lion's Eye Diamond, uh, because I wished for it with Karn in game one, and then I removed the, uh, the Ensnaring Bridge, and the engineered explosives I wished for, but I forgot to actually board out the LED after uh, wishing for it. So I'm playing with a 61 card deck right now. <laughs> Which, uh, luckily, due to the rules change, is a thing you're allowed to do. So, yes. Yeah, as long as your sideboard does not go above 15 cards, you're allowed to board in as many cards as you would like. Same thing, you're allowed to board out as many as you'd like as well, provided that your main deck is at least 60 and you have no more than 15 cards in your side. What's the uh, the Yorian joke of boarding? Yeah, you, you play 80 cards. Yeah, you play 80 cards, uh, and then you have one copy of Yorian in the sideboard, and then all you do for game two is you board in the Yorian and board out 15 cards you don't need. <laughs> So here we go with the Null Rod. So the Null Rod here is a very, very fantastic card in this matchup. Absolutely phenomenal. So uh, in this particular case, though, so I do have the Painter Servant online. However, um, I can't use the LED, and I also Grindstone is a dead draw here. Mm. Uh, so this Null Rod will have to be answered Excuse me, before, uh, before we can do anything else. Um, um, but you said you did not side out of any of your blasts, right? You kept in all four pyroblasts and your red blast? I believe I kept the red blast. I know I kept all four pyroblasts in. I believe I kept the red blast in as well. Okay. And again, the big reason for that is just because that null rod, I need to be able to answer it here. And so this is actually a... Answer to it here. Uh, this is actually during the upkeep. And I think I'm actually targeting the basic forest here. So what was your thought process behind that? So my thought process behind this is I don't have the grindstone right now. I don't need to answer this null rod yet. 
Um, big, big thing though, is that, uh, Zig having colored mana is very, very good. So what I ended up doing here is I tried to take him off of green entirely. Uh, and what he does is he actually copies the thespian stage onto a plains. Oh, sorry, from the plains onto the basic forest. And so what this does is, is this actually turns Zig off of white, uh, double white for, um, for okay. Skyclave kind of Apparition. Yeah. And yeah, that, that's one of the concerns there because again, the Null Rod, like I have the Ensnaring Bridge out. This, uh, this Reclaimer will not be able to attack as soon as one more land hits the graveyard um, under the Ensnaring Bridge. Uh, the Lion's Eye Diamond, I don't need to use for anything. Painter's Servant doesn't have any activated abilities. And as far as artifacts with activated abilities go that are still in the main deck, I think it's, uh, I think I actually boarded out all my Smuggler's Copters here. And if that's the case, then it's literally just Grindstone. And until I get that Grindstone, I do not actually need uh, to deal with this Null Rod. Zig also made a joke as well about how my Pyroblast ended up cryptic commanding his lands during upkeep. <laughs> And we are going to see the Red Blast. Yeah, and I believe this one's actually... Yeah, so this is on the stage that is the forest. So once again, turning Zeg off of green mana now. So all further Thespian stages will just be mountains, and the forest is in the graveyard. And it looks... Is this painter? Uh, no, I decided against it. <laughs> <laughs> like, he... he, he he can't block right now, but at the same time, you know, the, the slow anemic beats with the painter is so slow. Plus also, um, I was thinking about it too, because I was like, I can just race when he does this on end step. And that's the thing is, it was in response to a spell I cast in his upkeep is the only reason that the Reclaimer was tapped. So because of that, I was just like, I should probably just not even get on this gravy train and make a mistake later. <laughs> Uh, of note that we do have the Dark Depths down again, so if there is a way to answer this Blood Moon, uh, Meryl Age will immediately come out. That said, uh, Zig also needs to answer this Ensnaring Bridge on top of the Blood Moon in order to be able to attack with the Meryl Age. So here's a Goblin Welder. And uh, of note as well, uh, Zig's deck does not play Punishing Fire, which makes me very glad that... Uh, Make, makes the welders a lot better when there's no Punishing Fire. <laughs> punishing Fire is very, very powerful against uh, X or 1-1s and 1-2s that can win a lot of games. And like especially with Punishing Fire, people will snap those off on the welders immediately. Uh, they're a bit more reluctant in terms of the Sword Supply Shares and uh, other forms of removal just because, well, especially with Sword Supply Shares because exiling the Painter means that you can't weld it. Um, however, it's, uh, uh, brain. Yeah, the, the lack of punishing fire, though, really helps out with trying to keep some of these creatures alive. And again, in Zig's case here, you know, going with the Sylvan Library as deep as he can, he's down to one white source right now, and then everything else is red. And uh, also of note, even though that Zig is on Naya Flagstones, the only red card in his main deck is Valakut Exploration. Which is a long and slow clock, but... Very, very long clock. To you, nonetheless. Yes, exactly. Especially with a, a null rod out. Yeah. So here we go, actually firing off the swords on, I believe, the welder. Yeah. Yeah, and just letting it get exiled. I believe I was actually holding a Pyroblast here, and if it had been targeting the Painter, I probably would have snapped it off right away, just because I need the Painter in order to be able to answer this Null Rod. Uh, so here we go with the second Painter. So of note here, uh, one of the things that two Painters does is it means that your opponent has to kill both of them in response to the Grindstone activation, or every single Painter on the battlefield. Every single one of them has to die in order for the combo to not kill you. So even I've played a game against goblins before where I 
uh, Veil of Summer is blue and black. I named white and red and green. And uh, what had happened was is that... Um, Actually, I'm not even sure. Oh, sorry, it was a Goblin Padre. That's why I wasn't naming blue. Anyway, uh, I had three of them out there, and uh, it's very, very scary when you have three copies of Painter Servant out and someone activates a grindstone. Very scary. <laughs> <laughs> Just, again, the, the way that Painter works. Um, oh, also, to explain for those who do not know how Grindstone actually gets the kill, again, I mentioned earlier, Painter Servant is a all cards on the battlefield and are also... All cards not in play are the same color in a, or are the chosen color in addition to their other colors. So what that does is is that uh, Painter Servant makes all the cards in your library blue in this case. So when you activate the Grindstone, uh, you flip over a land and a Mox Diamond. They're both blue cards, so you do it again. And then you flip over a Crop Rotation and say a Mill Rod, and they're both blue cards, so you do it again. And we did see that Valakut exploration come down. Um, yeah. Also, of note, Zig also took eight from that Sylvan library there. And Omegas of the Moon for yeah. uh, Prez. Yeah, and the, the Magus of the Moon here is really good because that, it means that um, one Skyclave apparition isn't going to dig Zig out of this hole he's in. So he's got to answer both the Magus of the Moon and the Blood Moon and the Insuring Bridge. <laughs> Uh, I believe actually I point out here that um, the uh, yeah so untapped yeah untapped yeah so the reason why is because these lands enter the battlefield as mountains and mountains histor or just generally do not enter tapped. Okay, so here we go with the Savin's reclamation. This is a very good flip here. So casting Savin's reclamation, targeting the basic forest, and pyroblast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Zigai gives that another go here shortly. Uh, it, it's not very long until it happens again, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I believe actually one of the things I was clarifying about too is just how much or what the criteria on it was because I didn't even know until this match that Savin's Reclamation could even hit lands. It's, it is permanence. Yeah. I thought it would have been non-land permanence, but I could have been wrong, <laughs> which I was in this case. Uh, that is a smuggler's copter, yes. So we're going to end set the reclaimer there. Uh, so again, the smuggler's copter, uh, it's turned off by the null rod here, but it is also a flying attacker, which is very relevant. Uh, so... Bit of history here. Smuggler's Copter is basically the card that replaced Sensei's Divining Top in the Red White Painter builds after uh, after Sensei's Divining Top got banned. Uh, R.I.P. Top. I miss you. <laughs> I will always be jamming as many Sensei's Divining Tops as I can whenever I play pre Strad. <laughs> With the Blood Moon and the uh, Magus of the Moon in play, uh, Zigai still gets to search for a planes when Flagstones hits the graveyard. Uh, actually, we this is one of the reasons why this particular play is taking so long. Is uh, uh, we actually had to double check with the judge on that one, and because that Flagstones is a leaves the battlefield ability, it still counts as a mountain as it dies, so it does not get you another land. Okay, it's leaves the battlefield and not enters the graveyard. Yes. Okay. It's interesting yeah. given how it is, uh, the text on it is formatted. Yeah. And then, yeah, just sacking the flagstones to go get another flagstones there. <laughs> yes, Charbel, I am commentating on my own game. <laughs> Oh, bit of unfocused camera there. <laughs> uh, so uh, another thing I learned this is that uh, if you actually use Valakut Exploration and have a land enter on your end step, say a fetch land, uh, the card will stay until your end step. So that plateau will stay there until the end of Zig's turn. And also, I would just like to say Plateau is a very underrated dual land. No bias. 
<laughs> I need yeah, to get apps for two mana. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> So of no here as well, it's mainly just figuring out what his options are here, I think. Um, again, Savin's Reclamation is live, but that's the only colored spells they will be able to cast for the turn. Only land with a cowboy on it so far, indeed. <laughs> Hashtag pillar of the format. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, this matchup is definitely a long, slow, grindy one. Um, just, again, that's largely due to Blood Moon doing Blood Moon things. Um, and also, for anyone who's curious there, part of the reason why I went up to one Magus of the Moon and one Blood Moon is because uh, it's, a, it's a meta call. Um, the online meta and the paper meta, at least especially on our Discord, is very different from each other. A lot of people tend to enjoy playing what they find is fun um, rather than what is hyper-efficient. And I think part of that is free event entry, being proxy-friendly, things like that. People get to play whatever they'd like to play. And because of that, there's a lot of decks running around that are pretty soft to Blood Moon. Um, and as for the split between one and one, uh, the one Blood Moon is still good because you can always Enlighten Tutor for it. Uh, it's also a lot harder to answer because it does not die to Lightning Bolt or Sword Supply Shares like Magus of the Moon does. However, Magus of the Moon is recruiter or is uh, fetchable off of Re Imperial Recruiter, which is the reason why I'm doing a one-one split here, and uh, it's it's actually paid off for me very well this league. So, but uh, yeah, just again, lots and lots of fetching. Uh, Lots of other stuff. So here we go with a goblin engineer. So this engineer now is very dangerous because the engineer uh, can uh, go entomb any artifact in the deck, put it right inside the graveyard. So here we find the grindstone now. So now Zig has to answer this uh, this goblin engineer uh, before it becomes unsummoning sick in order to get the, or in order to stop the kill from happening. Oliver B, thank you for the sub. Uh, for those who don't know, Oliver V is one of our uh, new mods that just joined up a couple of weeks ago, so welcome, welcome aboard, and thanks for them very much for putting it back in with the resub. So we're actually going to... So this is interesting. So he hit uh, Zig hits an exploration off of Valakit exploration here. And without the access to the green mana, uh, he's not able to cast it. Hmm. <laughs> Mia making an appearance? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. That is, uh, that is my lovely cat Mia for anyone who uh, has never met her or seen her before. She she occasionally makes cameo. She's not in here right now, but uh, yeah, no, I made sure to. Uh, she said hi on stream. So, <laughs> so here we go. We actually hit the Skyclave apparition now and a source to plowshares. So this is really kind of rough at the moment. So he actually fires off the swords on the Magus immediately here, uh, rather than the Goblin Engineer. And um, I'm thinking part of the reason is, is because Zig knows that these Blood Moons make it so Zig doesn't really have a way to win, is the issue. Uh, of note here as well, uh, this is the particular game situation I was talking about, about why I left the Null Rod alone, is because one Pyroblast uh, basically wins the game here. Mm. Uh, because now that I actually have access to the Grindstone, now I need to be able to deal with this Null Rod. Because the other thing, too, about Null Rod is Null Rod actually turns his Mox Diamonds off. Which uh, I believe Zig is actually holding onto a Mox Diamond in hand right now. Uh, and that's part of the reason he's not playing it is because the Null Rod has turned it off. So here we go with the Pyroblast on the Null Rod. And the only source of white mana is tapped down. Yes, of course, yeah. So now, uh, 
Zig goes deep into the tank at this point, and uh, rightfully so, because he, he knows what's about to happen here. Because <laughs> of note, uh, I don't have enough mana to be able to weld in this grindstone and activate it. However, the LED I forgot to board out after game one uh, is still there. It's been locked down by the snow rod the whole time. <laughs> Happy accidents. <laughs> <laughs> So what he's doing here is he's basically playing the lottery. He is going to go fetch for uh, a land, and then he gets one hit off of this Valakid exploration, and he needs to hit a card. So in this case, I'm sitting here basically saying, go play the Pyroblast lottery. Uh, however, Zig did not board Pyroblast in. Zig's actually hoping to hit a, um, a uh, Force of Vigor here. Mm. And of note as well, the Force of Vigor hitting both of the Painter Servants will actually make it so I can't even combo kill. But the other thing Force of Vigor does is it's actually able to hit the Blood Moon and the Snaring Bridge in the same card. And Zig actually did the whole I will let you choose your fate thing here with uh, cutting the deck. <laughs> it makes for a fun time for sure. And he's just, yeah, Windmill Slam, Windmill Slam, let's go. And it's oh. a tie. <laughs> So yeah, you can see there, Mox Diamond in hand, the Skyclave. So yeah, in this case here, you just weld the Copter out, and then you um, weld the Copter out for the Grindstone, active, crack the LED, and then from there, you're able to mill out with the Grindstone. So that's uh, that was two very, very long games, both long due to the power of Blood Moon, but that's kind of how it goes. So, Folks, that's going to do it for us for round one. Uh... Dabo set. Thank you very much for the follow. Thanks for handling that pronunciation, Prez. I wasn't yeah. gonna talk about that one. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that's going to do it for round one for us, folks. Uh, we'll be back shortly with round two, which is uh, Tensai on Stephalid Breakfast and uh, Evil uh, on uh, Attack on Titan, also known as um, uh, Pokepile. Uh, yes. We'll be back shortly and uh, stick around. Yep. Uh, we'll see you shortly.